Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful performance. Uh, and thank you for tuning us for the upcoming uh, discussions. Because uh, this afternoon, there are many topics to be discussed, uh, be beginning with uh, the EU's geopolit geopolitics and geoeconomics, uh, proceeding with um, topics like Fit for 55 or digitalization, twin transformation, and so on. Uh, so the program of uh, this afternoon is uh, super, super busy. And uh, we will discuss uh, all these uh, topics uh, till, till the evening. And uh, yeah, the, the main, uh, let's say, motto of this summit is uh, leading the digital and the green and digital uh, future. And as I said, uh, I think that this summit is a leading platform to discuss not only uh, green and digital future, but also other topics uh, which are super important when we are talking about the future of uh, Europe and uh, future EU policies. And uh, now it's time to listen to words of welcome uh, from the organizers. Uh, I would like to welcome here on the stage uh, directors of institutes that are responsible for, for this uh, wonderful event. So let me invite here uh, two first speakers for their opening remarks. Marks. Uh, I would like to introduce you, uh, Mr. Andrzej Dietrich, uh, Director of the Institute of uh, International Relations in Prague, and also uh, Mr. Martin Vokalek, Executive Director of European Institute for European uh, Policy. So please, uh, if you can come here, and uh, the floor is yours for your welcoming speech, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Aneta. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, every Prague European summit that I've had the pleasure of opening over the past years was taken in the middle of crisis of some sort. And we've had plenty of those indeed. Migration, COVID, crisis of political authority, energy, and last but not least, profound crisis of the continental security order that unreals in the world of growing power competition, disruption of global flows that underlie the models of prosperity for so many, fragmentation of international law, weakening ordering practices, and respect for even the most fundamental norms of international society. The crisis came in a series, and now they're piled one onto another in what some call a poly crisis. And this poly crisis tests European unity and resilience. It tests the performance and legitimacy of our political institutions. It tests our solidarity and responsibility as the fabric on which open societies are built and on which they are sustained. The stakes could not be higher. In this difficult time, the Czech Republic took the steering wheel of the Union, and I dare say that it has, by and large, gained respect in this role, contributing to the competent navigating of the European Union through today's perilous waters. It's this respect and competence that makes even smaller states great. And it's my hope we'll continue to show it even when the presidency is over and spend the precious form of capital wisely to promote our values and interests in what most certainly will be an increasingly challenging environment for a state of our size and of our place. For that, we need a coherent vision of success as the Czech Republic and as the European Union. The European Union will need to change. It will enlarge to the East, even if it takes time. And the enlargement will need to come hand in hand with institutional reform to make the EU more actionable, even as it grows to include Ukraine and others in the fold. This will not be an easy feat, but to pretend that it can be avoided is simply foolish. Rather, we need to think hard and long how to make that change so that it preserves the best of the European Commonwealth and provides it, and by extension, the member states with means to security, prosperity, and freedom in unity. This is one revision we need how to move forward with the European project. I'm very pleased that tonight we will celebrate a man, a statesman, who has carried and conveyed European vision throughout his life. And I can hardly think of anyone from Central Europe who would deserve the Vision of Europe Award more at this time. 
but we'll also need practical solutions that will allow the EU to pass through the multiple skylas and charybdis of today. The Prague European Summit has been, I'm pleased to say, the established and proven platform for these practical debates. Looking at the programme, this year promises nothing else. We're going to have discussions about EU geoeconomics against the background of multiple disruptions in global flows, their restructuring to ensure the Union's strategic resilience. We're going to talk about how the twin systemic challenge of climate change and emerging disruptive technologies transform the lives of our societies and how to make them adapt and to become more resilient while maintaining social peace and justice as some industries, including transport, are going through inevitable dramatic change. We're going to talk about how best achieve the climate targets, how Europe can benefit most, even lead on the green and digital transformation, how its industrial strategy can position it vis-a-vis -vis Washington and Beijing, or how it can guide positive transitions in its neighborhood. We cannot avoid the war on aggression, of aggression unleashed by the Russian state against Ukraine, of course. <laughs> And we will focus specifically on how it makes and remakes the state that bravely defends itself against the Kremlin's militant revisionism and what it means for the European Union. We'll talk about Belarus too and the prospects for that unfortunate country whose transition after the fall of the Soviet Union to the turn to the current state of hopelessness. I am looking forward to hearing, as in the past, a lot of practical ideas on these and other issues. That's the Prague European Summit's trademark, after all. It's only with these ideas, together with the clarity of vision, ambition to act in concert, even without seeking to or being forced to becoming alike, the same, but recognizing the community of faith that we share on this continent faced with its critical challenges. Strategic foresight rather than imprisonment in the present moment and maintaining the pluralism that makes our open society strong and resilient, rather than losing the sense what the values that we now rightly need to defend are. It's only with all of these, I believe, that European democracies can make it through the current polycrisis and not become, admittedly, over the long term, a forlorn periphery to a multifaceted great power conflict resulting from unmanaged change in global politics. To act successfully on the challenges that are on our menu, so to say, EUs and PES alike, is a long run. That's why we believe, and it is another PES trademark, that the debates about these challenges must involve the younger generation. There is a number of good reasons for that, but perhaps the most important one is it is their world, the shape of which is now being decided by what we do, and it should be our shared responsibility. This is why Prague European Summit has for years, and this edition again is no different, been complemented by the future European Leaders Forum. In conclusion, let me thank everyone who has made this conference possible, whether it's our partners, sponsors, experts, the project team, the interns, the musicians. I'm truly grateful for everyone's indispensable contribution and tireless effort. I'm sure it will pay off. Thank you. Enjoy the debates. And with that, I wish to pass the mic to Martin, representing our partner organization, European. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Europe is entering a new geopolitical era where our validity and prosperity depend on our ability to unite in our diversity rather than fragment. This new era is, is green and digital, and Europe has a unique opportunity to achieve a leadership position in these areas. However, it requires our firm and continuous effort. So please, I hope you will allow me to use the motto of the Czech presidency from Václav Havel's speech, Europe as a task, and say that if we are able to overcome current crises and further strengthen Europe, which is united in our common values, we all must understand Europe as a long-term task. It is my hope that we will continue using the Prague European Summit as one of the regular platforms to focus on the Central and Eastern European needs and perspectives on how to work on this long-term task responsibly and proactively, even after the Czech presidency. Thus, it is our pleasure uh, to thank Prague European Summit team and other colleagues from European IIR who worked hard whole year to make this conference a reality. But all these efforts will not materialize without our partners, 
who are in many cases with us for a very long time and whose support is fundamental. So I would like to thank the main partners of Prague European Summit 2022, who are the government of the Czech Republic, representation of the European Commission in the Czech Republic, Hans Seidel Stiftung, European Investment Bank, City of Prague, Stratos Auto, and EIT Urban Mobility. Also, it's my pleasure to thank all the main media partners, who are Czech Television, EU Observer, Radio Free Europe, Hospodářské noviny, and we are also very grateful to many other partners and supporters of the summit. Last but not least, as the Prague European Summit aims to regularly contribute to the discussions about the EU and its future, I would not, uh, it would not be possible without you all here. Hence, we would like to thank you all for being here with us, either physically or watching us virtually, representing the public and private sector, civil society and academia, and bringing your perspectives and ideas on how to tackle current challenges and lead the European and European citizens to a green and digital future. Once again, thank you and welcome to the Prague European Summit 2022.